I need this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How many of you have gone into hotels and you have not asked for any accommodations? Ha. Huh? How many? How many? You, 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 you up there? <laughs> How many of you? <laughs> I'm going to tell you a few stories of what could happen if you don't ask for those accommodations. <laughs> not fun. Here's one, and this one I have um, truly worked, <laughs> worked it through. <laughs> I have a friend, his name is Mikey, and he's a big jokester, big. So um, one time there was a conference for hearing loss. Um, I don't know if it was St. Louis or where it was, but anyway, big hotel, big conference center, blah, blah, blah. And during the night, the fire alarm went off. <laughs> Woo! So everyone hurried and, you know, got ready and started coming out. The fire department ran up all the stairs and guided the people down to a special room where they had them all. And then um, when they checked their list, Mikey was missing. <laughs> Mikey was missing. <laughs> So <laughs> the, fire the fire department ran up those stairs again and knocked on his door. Of course, he's deaf. He uses cochlear implants. He had them off. <laughs> so fire department knocked on the door again, nothing. So they barged down the door. They walked in. There was Mikey in the bed, snoring away in his birthday suit. <laughs> so the fire department woke him up and said, hey, dude, don't you hear the alarm going off? Of course he doesn't. <laughs> he grabbed his cochlear implants, put some on, and said, oh, <laughs> I hear a fire alarm. <laughs> so <laughs> he said, dude, we need to get you out of here. So they grab Mikey, they run down the stairs with Mikey, and get him into the room with everybody else. <laughs> He said, hey, Mikey, what happened? Why didn't you come down with us? I said, well, I don't know. I didn't know the fire alarm was going off. <laughs> so, oh, man. So the joke was on Mikey this time. But I'll tell you some other stories, you know, because Mikey didn't have any accommodations regarding the fire alarm. He didn't hear it. He didn't see it. Nothing. So... So those are the consequences. <laughs> Mikey, this one is for you. But anyway, other things could happen. <coughs> uh, like myself, I was at a hotel with my family, and one of my sisters was staying with me. Uh, but you know, the whole family was going out, and I was really tired. So I said, I really need to go up and, and take a break and rest. So I did. This is early in the morning for some reason. But anyway, I lied down and I conked out and I was sleeping. And uh, there was a knock at the door. I didn't hear any knocks. There was, you know, the cleaning lady came and knocked on the door. Said, cleaning lady, nothing. She knocked again, cleaning lady, nothing. So she opened the door to come in and, and clean the, the uh, room. And she got spooked because... She found me lying in the bed. <laughs> I was not in my birthday suit. <laughs> I was fully dressed. But, <laughs> but she got spooked and backed out. And why? Because <coughs> there was no sign on the door that the person there was hearing impaired. So <laughs> she had no notification that the person there was hearing impaired. So, so that happened. Another time... Um, in another visit, uh, my whole family was out, and I said, you know, I didn't sleep well last night, so I really need to go up and, and rest the, the rest of the afternoon. And they said, okay, that's fine. We'll be back late. So, so I didn't worry about it. So I went upstairs and, and laid down, and I really conked out. And um, I mean, as to myself, I locked the door from the inside. <laughs> So my sister came up with her key, and she couldn't open the door because I locked the door. 
So she had to go all the way back down and go to the desk and say, hey, my sister's deaf. She locked the door from the inside, <laughs> and I need to get in. <laughs> so the front desk was really nice, and they just went up with her and unlocked the door. They made sure that I was okay, and they said, is she okay? She's not hearing us, and she said, no, she's deaf. <laughs> she's doing her usual, <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> She'll be fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know... <laughs> It's those kind of things that could happen if you don't ask for accommodations. You know, we all have cell phones today, and um, they either connect with our hearing aids or their or our cochlear implants. But if you don't have a uh, cell phone or you don't want to use your cell phone, the front desk will usually have an amplified phone that they can install in that in that room. They also have rooms with um with uh flashing lights for the fire alarm so if flashing lights work for you then my suggestion is that you do ask for flashing lights for a room with flashing lights either also with a doorbell they have rooms with doorbells um that that flash inside the the room so it's all these kind of accommodations that they can do now that will help you, that will prevent an embarrassment, that, <laughs> that will help your family not be frustrated. <laughs> so, so do ask for accommodations. And you've already heard, you know, a few of those. And so you need to let them know you're deaf, you're very hard of hearing, and do you have a room with accommodations and for the hotel to tell you that. Um, what they can offer so so that you can you know figure out what tools do you need to bring with you so that you're safe and, and comfortable in the in the room at that hotel so I wanted to put this out because I already put out one uh, that will be coming out soon about the Marriott um, and the Marriott has had to make legally made some changes because they didn't have any information about accessible rooms on their website. There was no way to find it. And if you found it, there was no information behind it. So you couldn't see the room, you couldn't see what the accommodations were, and so there was just a lack of information. And other hotels that were part of the Marriott chain didn't even have accessible rooms. <laughs> so, oops, <laughs> they were caught with, you know, hands in the fire. So the, the U.S. Department of Justice said, ah, you can't do that. So um, Marriott is in the process of changing their website and making sure there's sufficient information on their websites and that you can uh, reserve those rooms and that they won't change them on you. So there's a couple of details that they're working on. So please, um, to avoid your embarrassments, <laughs> Request accommodations in the room, even if you don't need them. You know, you just never know. Your cell phone breaks or whatever, then you at least you have a backup. So these are just a few tips for staying in hotels if you are hearing impaired and or deaf so that you are comfortable in that room, you feel safe, and uh, the hotel is alerted so the... Um, the cleaning lady doesn't walk in, you, in on you <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> so, all right. So any questions or any stories you want to share <laughs> that happened to you <laughs> in a hotel without accommodations, feel free to share it. <laughs> it might help some of us and um, to prevent that issue <laughs> and to be safe when we stay at hotels, especially when we are by ourselves. <laughs> All right, take care. Feel free to watch any of the videos that show up there and um, to subscribe or comment or share your experiences. All right, I'll love to see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.